Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale retro figure unboxing and review. Now today we are going to be taking a look at none other than Jake Sully from Avatar 1. Now I'll bet that some of you didn't even know this was a thing that back in the day Hot Toys made an Avatar figure but oh they did. And even by today's standards, this guy is a pretty ambitious release. What the hell does that mean? We'll get stuck into it in just a second. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I really like it. It's broken up into three distinct vignettes from the film. Up top, the floating mountains of Pandora, plus Jake Sully and Natiri both on their banshee. In the middle, home tree and an avatar logo. Then down below, the flora of Pandora, plus Natiri and Jake Sully once again. On the side of the box, Jake Sully. On the back, all of the warnings and legal info. Now, you can slide off the top cover for a sneak preview, but you'll know we're not here for that. We're here to unbox Jake Sully, and here he is in all his glory. And if you couldn't already tell based off the size of the packaging, this guy is an absolute unit. He's very tall. He is 1 6 scale, but seeing as though the Navi are so tall in the movie, he kind of feels a lot closer in size to a quarter scale figure. But like I said, he isn't. He's 1 6 First in hand impressions are I love the blue and he feels very substantial, a lot heavier than I was expecting. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, now in the intro, just a few moments ago I said this guy was a pretty ambitious figure for back in the day. This is a figure from 2012, so at the time of filming this video he's 10 years old. One of the big reasons why it was ambitious is the brand new body, but we'll save that for later. The other reason is this, a brand new diorama display base. It was all new for Jake Sully and it looks awesome. There's a ton of texture to the rock work, the tree stump is nicely painted, but it has a party piece, an LED light up feature. You simply flick the switch after installing three AAA batteries and it lights up beautifully. The ground has some LEDs in it, the various little plants also light up, it's a lot easier to see in person, you'll just have to take my word for it. Then up top a clear flight pole and a waist clamp, because don't forget, like I mentioned just before, this guy is very tall, so a regular crotch grabber wouldn't have cut the mustard. The instructions do a great job of telling you where to put all this stuff, but you do get multiple different little tassels and necklaces and straps and bands and even a grenade belt to complete the look. Now the grenade belt has actual removable grenades, they're nicely painted and there's even some decals with some writing on the surface. You do have some proper working buckles but seeing as though this guy is so old these buckles are starting to look a little bit sus. Fingers crossed they don't snap on me. This though will simply slide on. Again, follow the instructions. You will be getting a much better look at all of this stuff on Jake Sully when we bring him out here, so technically if you wanted to, you could just pause the video and copy what I've done. I like that there's a mix between the modern day tech with the throat mic and the native Na'vi dressings, such as this one right here with the faux 1-6 scale feathers. No idea what they used to make those, but they both look and feel very real. Most of them are made of rubbery plastic, so they should slide over his limbs fairly easily. When it comes to weaponry, he's no slouch. He comes with his very own BFG. Now, in the movie, this was a mounted gun. So in 1-6 scale, there is a mounting point. Although it's not really all that functional, it's just there to be accurate to the film. You also have various tampos such as 30 cal and the fire select switch, plus release on the back on both sides, although the rest of the gun is static, nothing opens or moves here. The paint applications 
they're pretty simple. It's done in this base layer of grey with some silver dry brushing for some subtle weathering. You also have this real fabric adjustable strap and a proper buckle, although just like the grenade belt, it's looking pretty sus. If I were you, I'd leave that one be. For something a little bit more stealthy, he also comes with his knife. Now it is removable from the holster, both of which are made of plastic, but the blade is a little bit prickly, so please be careful. I dig the texture on the holster and the knife, plus there's some velcro on the back, so you can actually attach this thing to Jake Sully. And lastly, two extra hands. Yeah, you heard that right, only two, you get four in total. Nowadays I'd be complaining and saying hot toys, what the hell? But seeing as though we got so much new stuff here with the brand new display base, the BFG and the all new body, I can forgive the hand selection just this once. I also love the skin texture, it's super HD, there's some vein work, there's wrinkling, there's even fingernails. And the blue, it just pops. There's a darker blue on the back of the hand and for the palms it's a little bit lighter. What we are going to do now though is get Jake Sully himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Even though this guy is getting older, he's still pretty awesome, he's still got it. He's very tall, he's quite lanky and to me at least his proportions, they look spot on to the movie. Plus, he's bright blue, so if you're looking for something to tower over your other figures and stand out in the collection, this guy could potentially do the trick for you. The outfit looks deceptively simple. At first glance, it's okay. There are a few tassels and sculpted pieces, but when we zoom in a little bit closer, there's more than first meets the eye. The same thing, unfortunately, can be said for the joints. They're very visible. Now, if Hot Toys were to make a Jake Sully nowadays, hint, hint, Hot Toys, please do, then maybe it would be seamless. But back in the day when this guy was made, they didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. They stuck with Sculpted. Even though they did that for durability's sake, he's still pretty fragile. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. Now, when Hot Toys decided... Yeah, we're gonna make a Jake Sully, and we're doing it in 1-6 scale. That decision can't have been easy, nor could the entire production process, because this is all new. It's a brand new body, and it sure as heck is a brand new head sculpt. In the movie, this was all CGI, so it's not like there were masks and prosthetics they could scan to make this. Hot Toys, they had to start from scratch. And considering this is their first attempt, I'm pretty happy. I think it looks like Jake Sully. The skin texture is nicely sculpted and well painted with multiple layers of blue and some speckling on the surface. You do also have a little bit of an open mouth expression, but I kind of like that. It looks kind of inquisitive, but also a little bit fierce with the furrowed brow. Now, speaking of the brow, up on top of it, we do have his visor. If you're wondering, ooh, is that removable? No. The instructions say don't remove it, but technically, if you wanted to, it is a separate piece, so you could cut it off. It's entirely up to you. He also has his little earpiece, which is teeny tiny, but well done as well. You do have some proper rooted hair braids around the back, and up top, it's all sculpted. The blend between the sculpted pieces and the rooted pieces, it looks almost seamless. Unlike this piece, which isn't. There is a very clear seam line on the back of the head, and if you're thinking, ooh, moving eyes. No, there's no moving eyes here. I was hoping there was, because there's a little bit of depth to the eyes, but no, they're fixed in position. Maybe with a future version they will be moving, but with this one, they aren't. As I mentioned earlier, all of the joints, yes, they're sculpted and they are very visible. Up here at the shoulders, visible joints, elbows, visible, wrist pegs, visible, torso, you guessed it, visible. Plus, even down here for the legs. Now, you can do a couple of things to try and minimize the visible joints, but they're not going away, they're always going to be there. You can rotate these feathers to try and hide the elbow joint on both sides, plus futz around with this loincloth piece, but other than that, they're just gonna be there. You do have multiple different belt sections, one with the grenades. Yes, they are removable. You can also remove the knife from the sheath. It's velcroed in position, like we discussed in the accessory segment. Now, he is currently wearing his throat mic, but 
all of this stuff is removable or adjustable. You can have him wearing as much of it or as little of it as you want him to. Plus, the skin texture, just like the head sculpt, is very HD. It's almost 3D, like how we had to watch Avatar. I am so sorry I had to. There's some subtle vein work and multiple little white dots for added detail. You do have an asymmetrical design with a gauntlet on one side, but not the other. Around the back, no, we're not here to look at the Avatar booty, although yes, it is present. He does have a fully wired tail. Plus, he does have the little piece that he uses to make the bond with various creatures and things on Pandora, and there's even a little bit of white to represent the teeny tiny feelers. The tail does seem to be holding up well, even though, like I've said a bunch of times, this guy's quite old. It's that stretchy, rubbery plastic, but so far, no cracking. Coming down to the legs, this guy, he's very leggy. I am so sorry. I can only apologize so many times. I know, my jokes are awful. Now, you can see some exposed knee joints here, but in my opinion, they're not the worst exposed joints. I'd either give that to the elbows or the torso. You also have some gaps up here for the thighs, but you can kind of adjust them, they're not that bad. The skin texture, really good, just like the rest of the body, and I love the tiger stripe pattern. It's subtle, but it's absolutely there. We do have the loincloth made of fabric and multiple different braided bead sections, plus one with no beads at all. Then coming down to the inner shin armor, fully sculpted, and I love the color variation. There's some lighter brown, plus some darker brown, and these sculpted sections genuinely do look like rope. It's also an asymmetrical design. We've got feathers on one side, a mix of real feathers and sculpted, kind of like the gauntlet on the other side up above. It's this mismatched design, but it works well. For the feet, they look like huge human feet. There's even some sculpted toenails and some vein work and nothing underneath. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Jake Sully alongside Alita. The reason I went with Alita is, of course, the James Cameron connection. Now, to me, this looks pretty spot on. In the movie, the Avatars, or the Na'vi, they were very tall. So in one six scale, Jake Sully is as well. That's kind of exacerbated by Alita being rather short, but in the collection, if you're wondering, yes. Jake Sully, he's gonna tower over everyone. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy and I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to be extremely careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a fixed neck and a double ball pick. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. Now these arm joints, they're prone to breakage, so you can probably push them further. Going up to there, Going forward and back, single bend at the elbow on ratchets that also incorporates a swivel, plus an oversized hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. We do have two ball joints for the torso, one underneath this section, going forward and back, swiveling and pivoting, and another that's a little bit more visible, also crunching forward, swiveling and pivoting. The legs will go forward to there, Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, single ratcheted bend at the knee that's extremely stiff and sturdy, then down below a hinge and swivel for the ankle. Think a massive wrist peg. Wrapping up on Hot Toys, Jake Sully from Avatar 1. Going into this, I was excited, but I thought to myself, how good can this guy be? He's from all the way back in 2012. Well, it turns out, Hot Toys, they were onto a winner, because this guy is really good. He's super tall, he's very lanky, he looks spot on to the film. Now, I know I've said he's tall so many times throughout this review, but I really wanted to hammer that point home. This guy is enormous. So, if you do want something that's going to stand out in the collection and is from an iconic movie, this guy might just do that for you. Now, he isn't perfect. We discussed the sculpted joints already, not a huge deal breaker for me, but the fragility is. So, with the plastic degrading as they're sitting in the boxes, you do run the risk of receiving a broken figure. And because it's not a brand new one, it's not super easy to replace or repair. So, do bear that in mind if you're thinking about getting this guy. I picked this guy up knowing full well Hot Toys will be making more Avatar figures in the future, but 
I'm someone who likes to have a representation of a character from each movie, so that doesn't really bother me. Like I said in the intro, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.